This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. So I have here the new M3 MacBook Pro that I've been using for a while. This year's MacBook Pros are mostly the same as last generation, but they have introduced a couple new features that I wanted to touch on, like new GPU capabilities and of course the new color. Now when Apple introduced the new MacBook Pros at their latest event, something I found kind of interesting is that Apple made multiple comparisons between the M3 and the M1. Maybe Apple is thinking your M1 MacBook is a couple of years old, so why not entice you with a bit of a performance boost? Well, I just happen to be in that very position. For anyone who has been on this channel, you might know that I use the M1 Pro MacBook Pro for most of my creative workflow. So I'm going to run through some of the new things that Apple has introduced this year and compare the two base model 16 inch MacBook Pros to see if it's worth the upgrade. Inside the box you get your documentation, a color matched USB to MagSafe charging cable with a not so color matched white charging brick, black Apple stickers for your Pro device and a brand new MacBook Pro. I've got here the 16 inch model, so this comes with a 140 watt charging brick, but 14 inch MacBooks come with either a 96 watt or 70 watt charger depending on the spec. If you get a base M3 chip or an 11 core Pro chip, you'll get the 70 watt brick, which means you won't be able to fast charge, so keep that in mind. And that's not the only thing you miss out on on the lower tier 14 inch models, but we'll get into that a little later. All right, this year's MacBook is not a redesign, so there's nothing too different on the outside, but there are some minor changes. The first of course is the new space black color that's only available for MacBooks with Pro and Max chips. And yes, you might have seen in other videos that it's not really a true deep black. Like if you compare the space black to the anodized aluminum behind the keyboard, you can see the difference. But I mean, it's pretty dark in standard lighting conditions. Maybe it looks more like a gray when it's under heavy sunlight. Some people are saying it's more of a dark gray, but for me, it passes as a black. All right, so Apple made a point about their new coding that they're using being more fingerprint resistant. And this is great because fingerprints will always show up on a darker device. So to put this to the test, I conducted a very scientific experiment to simulate a not so uncommon scenario that a MacBook might face. Would Space Black be able to withstand the grease from Australia's finest Red Rock Deli chips? To run the test, I took three samples. A control group with no snacking, a post snack a post-snack serviette wipe, and a straight mid-snack grease transfer. And I think the coating holds up pretty nicely. There are definitely some prints showing up post-snack and post-serviette, but there was a fair amount of grease on my hands, and I think it does a pretty good job at handling it. If you're not snacking, I don't actually see any fingerprints from the test. And having used the MacBook for a while, that's probably what I see most of the time. If you're snacking and going directly onto the MacBook, first of all, that's crazy. And secondly, it will show up on the Mac. The resistance is strong, but not that strong. Another change this year has been the ports. Since they've removed the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which was called a MacBook Pro, but was sort of in its own category because of its older design, you can now buy the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the base M3 chip. And on those models, you only get two Thunderbolt ports instead of the three ports on the other models. Other than that, they're the same. So we have a HDMI 2.1 port that supports up to 8K at 60 Hertz an SDXE card slot, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a MagSafe port. A quick note about the MagSafe port. I was initially pretty excited about the return of MagSafe when Apple brought it back, but having used it for a while now, I have to say my opinion has kind of flipped the other way, mainly because I don't really use it that much and I miss the fourth Thunderbolt port that was on the old Touch Bar MacBooks. Plus, the MagSafe cable is a proprietary charging cable, which means you need to have an extra cable lying around, and it doesn't support data transfers, so it's just not as useful as the Thunderbolt port. There have been a couple of dire situations where I've been using all three Thunderbolt ports and I needed a fourth. I mean, I know we also got an SDXC card slot and a HDMI port, so maybe I'm just being a bit greedy. All right, powering the new MacBook Pros this year is the new M3 chip. The M3 chips are Apple's first processor using the three nanometer design, and smaller transistors on a processor generally means more power efficiency and a faster processor, which is definitely what Apple is claiming. And comparing the performance to my M1 Pro, it looks like I'm getting about a decent 25% boost in CPU performance. But where we see most of the gains is in the GPU, where the M3 Pro scores over one and a half times the M1 Pro. 
Now, one of the newest features of the M3 family is support for hardware accelerated ray tracing and mesh shading, which is the first time we're seeing it on a Mac. This gives the computer better performance for 3D rendering and of course, gaming. So mesh shading has been around for a while now, but it hasn't really been used that much until very recently with the release of Alan Wake 2, where you pretty much need support for mesh shaders to run the game. So it looks like games are finally going to be implementing it. Unfortunately, Alan Wake 2 isn't supported on macOS, which is kind of the issue right now. There just aren't that many AAA titles that run natively on macOS. But now with MacBook Pro supporting hardware accelerated mesh shading and ray tracing, maybe it'll entice developers to make their games available on macOS. And of course, with all the new performance, you want to keep your Mac running smoothly. So you might want to consider an app like Clean My Mac X. Clean My Mac X scans your Mac for unnecessary junk files, malware, and unused apps, so you can remove them and reclaim storage and optimize your Mac's performance. The Diagnostics menu also gives you a quick way to monitor your Mac with information on CPU and memory usage, so you can see what's going on in real time. Here you can quickly close apps that are hogging your Mac's resources, so it's not being bogged down. And you can also get an overview of all the accessories that are connected as well. Space Lens also comes in pretty handy. Everyone knows that MacBook storage is not cheap, so unfortunately, you're probably going to run out of storage sooner or later. Rather than going through your Mac manually, Spacelens scans your Mac and organizes everything by size in an easy to navigate interface so you can quickly see which files are taking up your valuable storage space. So if you're looking to optimize your Mac, now is a great time to do it because Clean My Mac X is running their Black Friday sale from November 24th to the 27th. Grab 30% off your purchase at the link in the description below. Thanks again to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Okay, for anyone looking to use their MacBook Pro in a desktop setting, I thought I'd also mention that the number of external monitors the MacBook supports does depend on the chip. The base M3 only supports one external monitor while the Pro chips support two and the Max chips having the most external support at four external monitors. So if you're thinking of doing some extreme multitasking, make sure you buy the right one. If you don't plan on using the MacBook Pro with an external monitor, well, the good news is the built-in display is still fantastic. It's still Apple's XDR ProMotion display, which delivers up to 120 hertz at a sustained brightness of 1000 nits with HDR content and a peak of 1600 nits. And this year, they've also made slight improvements to brightness for SDR content, bumping it up from 500 to 600 nits. Always nice to see a bit of extra brightness, can't complain there. What I will complain a little bit about though is the notch. I wasn't expecting them to remove it since this wasn't a redesign, but I thought I'd mention it for anyone who's new to the MacBook. It doesn't look great. I will say you get used to it, but of course, I'd rather it not be there. All right, those are my thoughts on the new 16 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro. Will I be upgrading? Well, the new MacBook Pro has a pretty decent performance bump of about 25% from the CPU and a pretty impressive 150% boost from the GPU and introduces support for both hardware accelerated ray tracing and mesh shading. It boosts the display's brightness and still maintains amazing battery life crazy thermal management, which means complete silence in most use cases. But the thing is, as nice as the bump in performance is, the performance from the M1 Pro MacBook Pro is still so good. Even without that bump in performance, it handles 4K editing so well, so much so that I'm not sure I would see the M3's performance boost in everyday use. I have dabbled in 3D rendering, but it's not really the main focus of my workflow. So will I be upgrading? Not this year, but who knows, maybe next year. Okay, make sure you like and subscribe and tell me what you guys think about the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.